Uh, now that now that end game's out, I feel like I should do this shit. Do you just like yeah you drag it, okay. So, tell everybody. Um I am making this at almost ten AM at night. Making a video of talking about all the Marvel movies, all twenty two that are on here. I checked to make sure I got all twenty two. Does have endgame. So we're just gonna do it from an order of when they come of when this list is, so we'll start with Ant Man and the Wasp, Avengers, Black Panther, etc. etc. So I'm ready for this. Um so we have Amazing, which are movies that, you know, <laughs> are are awesome and I really really enjoy. Pretty good is that they're good, but they have some flaws that kind of bring it back for me in that amazing category. Decent where like they're not like really really bad, but they're not very very good either. Man, it's just like they're just they're just kind of boring. Garbage is movies that I really really don't like. And Unwatchable is movie that I just refuse to watch again. There's not gonna be as much in the Unwatchable. There's gonna be definitely a few in the in the garbage tier, but there's only gonna be like one or two in the Unwatchable section. But <sighs> There we go. So I have. I'm not really gonna make check to make sure what's next, so I can kind of keep a surprise. I'm not really paying attention. So the first one is Ant Man. And before I start, I'll just say like I'm gonna kind of give my brief like thoughts on the movie before I put it in my area. So I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Uh, first Ant Man. First Ant Man. It's. It's a heist film, but like it, it follows like a very very standard formula. It's basically like the same as Iron Man. Like rich businessman wants to sell to these like corporations, and the villain's just pretty much a bigger, pretty much the same thing as the hero. It's like Iron Man. Where the hell is Iron Man? There it is. Um, Ant Man's pretty decent. I don't know. It, it's 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 okay. Ant Man and the Wasp. And Wasp is not as good as the first one, it, because it, it's what I, what a lot of people call a MacGuffin story. Like everyone's chasing after this lab, but uh, there's some characters that are just wasted in this movie. Like Michelle Pfeiffer has like what 10 minutes of screen time, maybe even less. And uh, there's so many like plot contrivances in it. I don't know. I'm gonna put it in the meh category. <sighs> this is gonna be some unpopular opinions in here. Uh, right there, that's good. Um, next we have the Avengers. Oh boy, uh, the Avengers. <sighs> the movie feels a little bit dated to me. I'm gonna put it in pretty good. Um, <sighs> because the Avengers, it has like some of, like the corniest dialogue of the entire MCU. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a Joss Whedon movie. Everyone's gonna be spitting quips like everywhere. If you don't believe me, watch uh, Alien Resurrection. He wrote that movie. Um, and there's so many like, and if you even watch this movie, you'll see that like some of the characters just don't feel like what they are when the Rooster Brothers took over for Infinity War and Endgame. I don't know, Avengers. It still holds up, but it's not it's not nearly as good as the two new recent ones. But we'll get to uh, the second. Avengers a little later. Next is Black Panther. We're gonna put this one in the garbage section. I don't like this movie. Uh, <laughs> Black Panther is boring. It the CGI is garbage, and its story. The only good thing really about Black Panther is its villain Killmonger. Like he literally just overshadows the hero itself. I think T'Challa is just boring in this movie. Like I really like Black Panther in Civil War and Infinity War. And, how long he is in Endgame, but in his own movie, he's just not good. It's definitely Ryan Coogler's weakest film out of the three he's made. I think it's three. I could be wrong on that. I think it's Fruitvale Station, Creed, and you know, Black Panther. But I don't know. Black Panther. It, it's not very. It's it's bad. Captain America: The First Avenger. Oh boy. Um. Uh, I have very, very, like, mixed feelings on this movie. This movie's a mixed bag for me. There's things about, like, I, that I really like. Like, that ending is one of the best endings in the entire MCU. Like, I had a date that just cuts to black. But, this movie also has some really, really stupid shit. This movie, like, just glosses over World War II, like, like, 
like that. And this movie also rushes over like him being Captain America once he, because like he gets like bullied for being Captain America like throughout the movie, but like it glosses over World War Two enough where it actually shows with him what he should be doing. He like saves his teammates and then just glosses over it until he needs to he needs to fight Red Skull. So. I don't know. It's a it's a mixed bag for me. I'm gonna put it in the mess section, but uh, it's it's not it's not horrible. Captain Marvel. See, this movie's just. I'm gonna put this right here. It Captain Marvel is painfully average. It it feels like a Phase One movie, but I really like Ben Mendelsohn's uh, Talos, and I really like Nick Fury's movie. But Brie Larson. I don't hate Brie Larson. I think she's a fine actress, and I think she's fine for Captain Marvel, but. It's not her that ruins the character for me. It's the character itself and how fucking horribly written she is. So, she needs to be written well. Even her friend, I think her name is Monica Rambeau, is poorly written too. Ooh, let me get rid of that. Um, so, I don't know. This movie has some really, really bad writing. It's first, like, five minutes of the movie, like, when he starts, when she starts fighting Yon Rog, who is a terrible villain, by the way. Yeah, Talos is a Talos is like, well, Talos is technically a hero in that movie. I guess I should say Yon Rog's the main villain. The Kree is the main villain, and the Kree's every every scene with the Kree is bad. It's, it's just it really is. The writing in the movie is horrendous. I really like Stanley's cameo in, in Captain Marvel, but yeah, Captain Marvel's meh. Civil War. I think Civil War is the weakest out of all four Russo brothers movies, but it's still really good. I'm gonna put it in pretty good. There's only two MC movies I think are amazing. Ugh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna put so I'm gonna put Civil War in pretty good because like the airport scene is awesome. Like I really like the airport scene, but the ending fight is spectacular. I don't really have any huge issues with it, but I don't think it's like perfect. You know, it's just I think the Sharon Carter storyline is just not useful in any way. I really don't like some of the characters in this movie, <laughs> but I like Spider-Man when Spider-Man introduced in that trailer. God, I, I, I came in pants. Uh, that joke wasn't fun. Ooh. Anyway, so it was pretty good. Doctor Strange. Put that in the mech category because, because Doctor Strange, even though it has some of the most amazing visuals, the MCU has ever shown us it has one of the most formulaic stories ever like it just it feel the Marvel formula is just kinda like plastered onto it and I don't know like oh this movie also kind of glosses over him becoming Doctor Strange like it just it feels too rushed the pacing in this movie is very very strange I <laughs> get it strange <laughs> see what I did there but uh, anyway, Doctor Strange, it's meh, whatever. Avengers Endgame, we're gonna put that in the amazing category. I'm probably being petty when I say this, but this is seriously one of the best MCU movies ever. Like, yeah, you can nitpick the uh, time travel, oh, spoiler alert, I guess, but, I'm sorry, if, if I spoil that for you, please, please don't get mad at me, but, you should have seen the movie right now, it's been out for like a month, but, it, it could definitely nitpick the, uh, time trial but I think it works perfectly fine like the way they go back to the Avengers where the Hulk, where Professor Hulk sees his previous Hulk smashing cars and just ruthlessly killing the Shatari is just amazing you get to revisit that iconic shot from you know the first Avengers and, um, and you also get to see Star-Lord actually singing the song from the, from the opening of the first Guardians that's that's just incredible to me I I, I love I love Avengers Endgame. It's, it's in the amazing category. There we go. Whatever. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. We're gonna put that in the uh, we're gonna put that in the uh, pretty pretty good category. I don't think it's as good as the first Guardians. The first Guardians is probably one of my favorite comic book movies ever made. We'll, we'll get to that next, but it it has. It has probably one of the best villains in the entire MCU is Ego, but the thing that holds it down though is the other villain of the film, the Sovereign, which is one of the worst MCU villains we've ever had. Seriously, the, the Sovereign just sucks. 
but ego has actually like kind of relatable and actually like good motivations to do what he's doing. In fact, he feels a little bit more threatening than Thanos because he actually wants to like improve all of the universe, like every bit of life. Thanos just wants to get rid of half. But I don't know. Am I the only one who's realized that, or am I just stupid? I don't know. But this movie has also some jokes that just don't that just don't completely work. But overall, it's a really really nice story about like family of them coming together. I need, I need to go to bed. But, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, pretty good. Now, we're on the first Guardians. The first Guardians is one of, like I just said, one of the best MC, MCU movies and one of the best comic book movies ever made. <coughs> but, no, that, uh, uh, Guardians Volume 1. I haven't seen this movie in so long, but it's still so good. Every joke works. Every every bit of dialogue, the pacing, acting, everything just works. It's a great story about family, about uh, learning to share pain. Every single one of the Guardians has lost someone. Drax being his family, Gamora family. Mirko lost his mother. Rocket and Groot, we don't really know. They're histories but we know they've lost people or at least we think they did I don't know if if Guardians 3 pro proves me wrong then whatever but this movie's learning to share pain they originally like you know don't get along I guess the story itself feels very very formulaic but the way it's executed is just it's just amazing to me it's it's fantastic if you haven't seen the first Guardians please watch it because it's one of the best MC movies ever moving on to the Incredible Hulk Put our first one on on the unwatchable category. I know Hulk is probably one of the worst MCU movies. I mean, it's the only one that has Universal involved with it. But this movie has some of the poorest acting and some of the worst like writing in the entire MCU. This movie is written like a written like a TV show. It has honestly Edward Norton's Hulk is just stupid. I like Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk way, way more. There's people that might disagree with me on that. I've seen a lot of people think that Edward Norton was better, but I fully disagree. His some of, there's too much like stupid fan service in this movie, and it gets actually distracting. At least Avengers Endgame, they actually do a good balancing act between doing fan service and actually telling a decent story. But they do some like really stupid fan service where they actually show like him holding up purple pants for like seven, seven or eight seconds, and that gets really distracting. The, uh, Liv Tyler's acting is just horrible. The only one who's doing actually a decently solid job is William Hurt and, uh, Edward Norton, but still, his acting's still not very great either. But, Incredible Hulk is, is really bad. Uh, the directing, acting, pacing, writing, almost everything about this movie sucks. Just saying. Iron Man 2. I don't think it says it's watchable, but it's still garbage. Iron Man 2 is what you get when you jumble too many plot lines at once. Tony Stark is dying. I'm I'm actually losing brain cells. Oh my god, I can't think of anything right now. Stark losing brain cells. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, it's yeah, Stark dying. There's like a shield storyline going on. Pepper being in control of the company. There's just too many plot lines going on. There's a plot contrivance where, like, how did Blipflash know that Tony Stark would be on the driving thing, being on the racetrack, if he was, you know, going in there last minute? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. So, this movie jumbles way too many plot lines, and it gets in the way of actually telling a good story. And the final battle is just, it's one of the worst in the MCU. And Whiplash fucking sucks. Just, he's, he's horrible. I'm, well, it's kind of granted because he, Whiplash or Mickey Rourke's uh, scenes, a lot of his scenes were cut out. I really like Justin Hammer though. That's one of the few saving graces of this movie from being an unwatchable mess. But it's still bad. It's still really bad. Now we're gonna get to the the most controversial opinion on this list, and I'm gonna get a lot, probably a lot of shit. But uh, we're gonna do Iron Man 3 is pretty good. 
It's not amazing. I'll I'll save you that, but it's still pretty good. Iron Man 3 is definitely not the best of the uh of the trip of the trilogy. I think the first Iron Man is and we'll get to that one next. Uh Iron Man 3 is the second best of the trilogy cuz it actually like tells a human story. Shane Black's writing is one of the best in the MCU. It has it has probably one of the most grounded like stories with like Tony Stark meeting this kid and they pretty much have to work with each other, to, you know, to solve a problem. Even though the Mandarin twist is one of the few things that hold this mo holds this movie back as being one of the few examples of how to do a twist wrong. So, Mandarin twist is is it's bad. Him actually being an actor and Guy Pierce, Guy Pierce's uh, Aldrich Killian doesn't really improve it in any way. So, yeah, Iron Man three is it's it's really good, but that twist kind of holds it back from being amazing. Now, to the first Iron Man. Iron Man is ama Iron Man is pretty good. Iron Man Iron Man this is probably the best of the best of all three. This movie starts off with Tony Stark being a dickhead and ends with that amazing I am Iron Man line to show how he's gone full circle from being an asshole to being a hero. Cuz this movie starts off with Tony Stark just being a being a dickhead, he he's mean to everybody. He he thinks the world revolves around him. But one accident and getting involved with terrorists just it it makes it makes him realize what the world is actually about. <sighs> I'm so tired. I I should have written a script for this. I really should have. But Iron Man Iron Man One also has a uh, a pretty decent villain. I think. Obadiah Stane's actually not as bad as people say he is. He's still his motivations are still kind of lame, but like his the final battle with uh, Iron Man when he has that like big suit is actually pretty good. I still I enjoy that. But overall, over Obadiah Stane is okay, but it's a it's a it's a pretty solid comic book movie. It came out the same year as The Dark Knight, same summer as Dark Knight. Even though I think Dark Knight is superior to Iron Man, but. But yeah, Iron Man, it's, it's pretty good. Avengers Infinity War. God, I'm, I'm going to probably feel like a total like idiot for putting this here, but... Nope, don't put you there. We're going to put you in the amazing category. This movie jumbles a bunch, like, a good 60 characters. It jumbles them perfectly. Thanos's, Thanos's motivations are actually interesting and they're believable and you actually sympathize with him they show he has the most screen time out of anybody in the entire movie coming at like what 29 minutes he um he has shown what he's done in the past at Kamora's home planet he he tells the tells the uh, viewers why he's doing what he's doing and he, he the movie ends with him succeeding like not a single movie this in this entire franchise before this or even after this, shows the villains winning. And the final shot of the movie is not him gloating or, or you know, laughing maniacally. It's just him sitting down on, at this like garden, smiling. The movie doesn't have like a flashy post, post, flash, flashy. Oh my fuck! A flashy credit sequence. This movie, is just depressing. Everything about this movie is just sad. Oh, I just broke my laptop. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm getting that. I gotta get that fixed. But, yeah, Avengers Infinity War, pretty good. God, I need to go to fucking bed. I'm recording, the, I'm recording this at 10 p.m. I know that's a little early, but I've had no sleep in the past three days. So... Thor Ragnarok. Another, another one that's probably gonna get... I'm gonna get some shit. We're gonna put it in only the decent category. It's definitely the best of the Thor trilogy, but I don't think it's still that great. Um, Thor Ragnarok sacrifice sometimes sacrifices a, a emotional moment for a joke. Uh, there's some characters in this movie that really annoy me. I don't like the Grandmaster. Probably gonna get some shit for that. I hate. God, what's the fiery dude's name? The fiery dude. Surter, Surter. I don't like Surter. 
Hulk, I like the Hulk and I like Thor. Valkyrie's fine. I really like Loki in this movie. But there's some characters that weigh this movie down. This movie also has some really strange pacing. This movie feels a lot shorter than it actually is. But all the scenes... I do like, though, that, that uh, this movie barely shows any Earth Earthlings and that the movie mainly takes place on either Sakaar or Asgard, but the scenes on Asgard are not as remotely interesting as the scenes on Sakaar, and Hela is not the best villain ever, but yeah, Thor Ragnarok is at the decent category. Spider-Man Homecoming, put it in a pretty good category. Spider-Man Homecoming is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie of out of all of them, including the Raimi trilogy, the Mark Webb two movies, and you know this one. I like, I really like Tom Holland as Peter Parker because he does that well balancing act between you know Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Now I'm of the opinion that I think Tony McGuire was a better Peter Parker, but Andrew Garfield was actually not a bad Spider-Man, but they just. Tobey Maguire definitely did not nail the Spider-Man part, and Peter Parker and not Peter Parker, uh, Andrew Garfield did not ha did not nail the Peter Parker aspect of the character. You know. Plus, I, I mean, I really like the Amazing Spider-Man 2's costume, and I think that's still my favorite out of all of them. But still, I like the high-tech Spidey suit that Stark made. It makes sense within the continuity of the MCU. You know, Stark being his mentor, but. Spider-Man Homecoming also, has what, also feels just like a teen comedy, like, there's only like one death in this entire movie, and it's played off as a joke. So, also contains one of the, one of my favorite villains of all time in the, in the MCU franchise, whatever, fuck you. So, Homecoming is really good, please watch if you haven't already. We're on Thor the Dark World now, you already know where this goes. Thor the Dark World is garbage. It is is horrible as one of the worst villains in the entire MCU. Acting and pacing is trash. Every single character... Natalie Portman looks like she doesn't want to be there. There's some characters that are really, really annoying. Darcy, for example, is a piece of shit and I hate her. Especially in this movie. In the first Thor, she's not as bad. She's still kind of annoying. Selvig is stupid. I hate Selvig. Because I like Selvig in the first Thor and the Avengers. But Selvig fucking sucks in this movie. Because one scene is just him running around naked at the Stonehenge, which was super cringy. But the directing just looks like shit. This movie sucks. I'm not going to rant on it anymore. Next is Thor. Put it at the meh category. Because this movie is not nearly as bad as Thor The Dark World, but it's still kind of just disappointing. This movie has so many Dutch angles that it just it, it becomes an eyesore to watch. Uh, there's a lot of characters that are just horrible, like Natalie Portman, that Darcy character, or whatever. I don't remember who she's played by, but almost every character in this movie is just boring. I don't like the the Warriors Three and Lady Sif. Like they're they're not interesting to me at all. And uh, some of the uh, the writing is just it feels very Shakespearean in its writing, and I'm not a big fan of that at all. So. Thor is just kind of an eyesore to watch, but it's still not as bad as Thor The Dark World. So, yeah. Our second to last one, we're at Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, we're going to put that in the decent category, because for all its flaws, I still really like Ultron. The reason why a lot of people don't like him is because in the trailers, he was portrayed as like this really maniacal, menacing villain. But in the movie, he has like a, has a star personality, which I personally like. So it's definitely the weakest of the the four Avengers movie, but I still really enjoy it. Um, but this movie also has one of the most maligned scenes in the in the entire in the entire uh, franchise. The uh, the vision of Th vision Thor's vision and like you know setting up Ragnarok is so maligned and so bad that it. it it ruins enti Thor's entire character arc in this movie. Thor sucks in this movie. But I like Black Widow's Black Widow's bl flashback. I like Cass fl flashback. Iron Man's especially Iron Man's especially I really like. But and I really like the Hulkbuster fight. That's that's amazing, but Yeah. Age of Ultron is just decent. Now Winter Soldier 
Yeah, you already know it. No. Going there. Uh, Winter Soldier is amazing. Winter Soldier is my now second favorite movie in the MCU, right below Endgame. It was my favorite for a long time. I thought Infinity War would, be, would beat it, but it didn't. But Endgame did, and I thought it never would happen. Infinity War has is probably one of the most like grounded and realism stories in the entire MCU. It's like a political thriller, and it has Hydra, you know, taking over Shield, and uh, it has some really really nice like twists and turns. I I'm I'm fucking tired, but Winter Soldier it, it's great. I really like Nick Fury in this movie, and I like Captain America. His suit is badass in this movie. And Black Widow is at her my favorite my favorite Black Widow appearance in the MCU so far. I liked I like Black Widow in Winter Soldier more than I do in Endgame, but not just by a little bit because I like I actually really like Black Widow in in uh, in Endgame. But you know Winter Soldier really really good. So now we are now done with the tier list. So we have Endgame Guardians. Infinity War, Winter Soldier, Amazing, Avengers 1, Civil War, Guardians Volume 2, Iron Man 3, Iron Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, and they're pretty good, Ant-Man, Ragnarok, and H. Voltron, and Decent, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain America, First Avenger, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Thor, and Meh, Black Panther, and Iron Man 2, and Garbage, and The Incredible Hulk, and uh, Thor 2, and Unwatchable. So yeah, I guess you don't have to agree with me, you really don't, so... Yeah. Why not? Bye, I love you all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a menace. Keep me a red I like tennis. I'm with this shit like I'm Dennis. I started this shit, I'm a finish. Niggas be hating, trying to blow.